Today's lesson 10.2, um, day two, is writing a linear equation for a line of best fit. We did this in our class today on the graphing calculator, and the graphing calculator told us the line of best fit. So recall that a line can be represented in the form y equals mx plus b. So the line of best fit can be represented by that linear equation where you find the slope, remember this from our linear unit, find the slope of the line, take two points, and then find the y-intercept and put it into that formula. So this one's done for us. First find the slope of the line of best fit that passes through the points 464 and 1458, and I highlighted them here in green. Um, so the slope is negative 6 tenths, or negative decimal point 0.6. Next, find the y-intercept using the equation in the slope-intercept form. So I have one of the points, and they chose the point 4, 64. So put the y in is 64, and negative 6 tenths m, my slope, putting that into the formula. Put my y value in, put my slope in, put my x value in. And you can see they go ahead and solve it, and you get 66 and 4 tenths, which is... 66 and 4 tenths is this point up here on the y-axis. So write the equation, y equals negative, yes, this is a negatively sloping line, 6 tenths x plus 66 and 4 tenths. So that is the line of the equation of the line of best fit. Use the line of best fit to interpret the meaning of the slope and the y-intercept in context. So the slope represents the decreasing percent of adults that acquire their news from newspapers. We know people aren't reading the paper very much anymore. Specifically, the data shows that an average decrease of six-tenths of a percent per year. The intercept of B represents the percent of adults that get their news from newspapers at the beginning of this study back in 1990. Specifically, the data show that about 66 and 4 tenths percent of adults got their news from newspapers. That wasn't too long ago that people were getting their news from newspapers, 66 percent. Now, 18 years later, um, in this data here, only approximately a little over 55 percent, it looks like, this point here are getting their and even less today, less newsprint, more media, um, live print. Okay, here we go. Page 18. The diagram below shows the scatter plot of the data from the first example in this lesson. Write an equation to find the line of best fit. So we're going to follow those steps that we had in the example just prior to this. This one is in your notes on page 18. The slope of the line of best fit passes through the points. 3 and 3 and 4 tenths for the y value there. 3 and 3 and 4 tenths. This point here. And it does pass through 4 and 4. Whole number 4. 4, 4. So it passes through the point. Nice, easy to read. 4, 4 and 3 and 3 and 4 tenths. So my slope, taking my y, delta 2, y2 minus y1, so 4 minus 3 and 4 tenths, that gives me 6 tenths, and 4 minus 3, my x values, gives me 1, so my slope is 6 tenths. So using the slope-intercept form to find the y-intercept, 4 was the y value, I'm going to use the point 4, 4. I'm going to use this point in the equation y equals mx plus b. So the y value is 4, my slope is 6 tenths, my x value is 4, and I get that 4 is equal to 2 and 4 tenths plus some b. I'm going to subtract 2 and 4 tenths from both sides, and they do it linearly across. So 4 minus 2 and 4 tenths, of course I would do it up and down. These cancel. And I get y, uh, 4 minus 2 and 4 tenths would be a b of 1 and 6 tenths. So 
my equation now, putting in that slope and that y-intercept is y equals my slope of 6 tenths times x plus my intercept b, 1 and 6 tenths. So the equation for the line of best fit is y equals mx plus b, y equals 6 tenths x plus 1 and 6 tenths. Page 18. Page 19. The table below shows the bivariate data on the duration of weekly exercise x and the total cholesterol level y in milligrams per deciliter among people of a group, among a group of people. Weekly exercise x and y is the milligrams per deciliter. So they tell you how to set up the graph Construct the scatter plot for the given table of bivariate data. Use one centimeter on that horizontal axis. Again, I would like you to use a straight edge to put your horizontal axis on here. And you can go in a box or not. And it is X, labeled X. And use a straight edge, please. And one centimeter on the horizontal axis represents one hour. So every one centimeter is one hour, and I only have up to eight hours as the highest data. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to label my x-axis weekly exercise right from the table. Um, which is hours, I don't have to say x here hours, and then labeling my y-axis, again you're using a straight edge, and my total cholesterol, shadows in my way, cholesterol, and that's milligrams per deciliter. Milligrams per deciliter. And go ahead and uh, on the y-axis use one centimeter to represent 10 milligrams per deciliter. Um, yeah, but my numbers starting with the lowest of being around 190 and going to up to about 270. So I would put a break on the y-axis here and maybe start at 180. I would like you to go ahead and put your scatter plot on here. Find your line of best fit. Remember, approximately the same number of points above and below that line of best fit that you're approximating. And then B, write an equation of that line of best fit. So you've got to find the slope. Go through the steps that were in the example earlier. Put the slope in, the y-intercept, um, the x value, find the y-intercept, and then using y equals mx plus b. So you're going to go ahead and graph, write an equation, and use the line of best fit to put it in context. You may want to go back in the video to find that context answer. And uh, then we'll go over that tomorrow in class.